Hi everyone, Anjita this side. Welcome back to EB Automation Hub. In today's video, we will see how we can perform load testing for HTTP request. So we will start with a GET call. So I'm going to cover all these topics in today's video. So the first one is how we can verify the status code. The second one is how we can pass headers. For example, if you have to pass authorization header in your API, so how we can pass that, I will cover this as well. Then I'm also going to cover some negative test case. So we can see how our result looks like in case of negative case. So now let's start with the first one, which is verifying the status code. Let's go to editor and start writing the code. So this is the test I have already created. And uh, this is already covered in the first video, but I will give you a quick overview. So the first statement is about importing. So it is importing HTTP so that we can call, call any HTTP request, for example, get request, post request or put request. You have to import HTTP for that. So the second thing is options object where you can pass your load, for example, for how many virtual users you want to pass or for how many iterations you want to pass. So we have already defined over here 10 virtual users and 20 iterations. Then comes the default function where you write your main logic. So in this, you can call your HTTP request. I've already written the code for calling a get request. So this is my URL and using HTTP.get, I'm going to call the get request. So the first topic which we are going to cover today is verify the status code. So how we can do that in case X. So in order to perform this, I'm going to use checks. So checks is basically to verify the test conditions that validate Boolean conditions in your test. And it always returns a pass or a failure. So it's similar to what many testing frameworks call an assertion. But in case of fail checks, it will not cause your test case to stop or throw an error. But with the check, you will always get a pass or a failure in the log. So let's see this in detail now. So first thing is we have to import check from K6. You have to write over here, import from k6 so in order to use checks we have to import it first now what we have to do we have to validate the response status code is 200 so first of all we will store the response for that i will use a constant variable and we'll name it as the response you can pass any meaningful link. so i'm just passing response so the next step is we will use check you can hover over it and you can see the some description also so they have already provided some template for example this is my response and how we can validate the response status code. They have provided some sample also. So we are going to do something similar here. So first of all, I'm going to pass the response. Next step is you have to pass a meaningful description. So this is the description of the test validation which you are performing. So I will pass it as status code validation. Now what we will do. So this is my response object. You have to pass an arrow function and now on this response object, we will do response dot status because we are going to get the status code of that response. Fine. So you have to use response dot status triple equal to 200. So I will explain you once more what I'm doing. First of all, you have to import check that this is your test validation. You are verifying the status code is 200. Now let's go to terminal and let's run this test. So in order to run the test, you have to write the command k6 run and your test name. So my test name is getapi.js. So in the logs, we will see we have HTTP request failure, which is 0%. This is my HTTP request. And then 10 virtual users and 20 iterations. And where we can verify the check. So just scroll up. And here you will see status code validation. So this is your check. So the green means it got passed. So this is the same description which you have passed. So I will quickly show you. So this is status code validation. So this is the same description. This is how you can perform check in your K6 script. Now the next thing which we are going to cover is how we can pass headers in an API call. So for that, I'm going to use a demo API, which is this corest.co.in. So in order to use this demo API, there is an authorization header, which we are going to use, which is a bearer token. So this authorization header, we are going to pass in our API call. So first of all, let's copy the URL of the API. So I will quickly change the URL. So the next step is we have to pass the header. So how we can pass the header? When you make this HTTP call in K6, it takes two parameters. So if you hover over it, you will see. So for the first one is the request URL. The other one is the parameters. So the parameters can be the headers, cookies, auth, tag, timeout. 
they came in multiple parameters but in our case we have to pass the header for that what we can do i will create an object over here and i will name it as headers and inside that i will pass my header so in our case the header name is authorization you can quickly check so this is my header name it's copy from here authorization fine and what is the value so value also we can copy directly from our post one so for example so let's pass the value now in the get call what we will do we will pass an object because this is our param and we want to pass it for header so what you have to do you have to pass it like this headers and then over here we will pass this headers so what i will do i will quickly rename it so the both headers underscore api and the same name i will pass here as well now if i rerun my test case we will see check is getting passed let's go to terminal i quickly clear it first and for running the test case the same command i will use k6 run get api so now let's see if the check got passed or not so you can see your check got passed and your test case is passed we can also see if there is any failure http request failure is 0% now let's check one negative case what if i pass invalid token so i will just append it with extra numbers fine and now let's rerun the test case we will see in this case how our test case is performing if our check is getting passed or failed let me just clear it so now running the same command and in this case the check should get failed why because our bearer token is not correct so let's quickly see so first of all you see the http request failure this is 100% now earlier it was 0% and if we scroll up you can see this is failed so this is a red color which means it's failure and you can also see 0% so this is how you can verify if your check got passed or failed and here also you can see checks and this is 0% earlier in the last case it was 100% but here it is 0% now we can be sure our test case is actually working fine our check is actually working fine now i will just undo this one this is one of the way the other way is what i will do instead of passing the headers object with your api call i will just create one more object as parameters and i will directly pass the parameter over here so how we can do that so what you have to do so i will create constant params object so now inside the params we have to pass the headers so what i will do i will pass it like this so headers and inside the headers i have to pass the whatever header name and value i want to pass so what i will do i will just copy from here and paste it inside it because we want to pass authorization header in our test case so earlier what we did we directly passed the headers over here i changed the name just because it was same name so in order to avoid the confusion i changed the name but we can keep the same name as well but here we can see we directly passed the object but in case if you have multiple headers or if you have multiple parameters also apart from header if you want to pass some tag or if you want to pass the cookies so in that case you can just create one object for params and pass it directly instead of passing multiple headers so it's just a cleaner way to create a test it's totally fine to pass it like this also but let's make it more cleaner so what i will do i will just remove this headers object and i will pass params so this params is basically picking up my header value from this object now what i will do i will rerun the test case and we'll see if it is working fine or not so let's go to terminal and run the same command which is k6 run get api.js and now if we see our test this should get passed you see status code validation this is getting passed checks is 100% and our failed is 0% so that means this is working fine but in case if you want to double check this is actually picking the correct bearer token or correct header or not so what we can do let's try one negative test case so just pass extra digits so this makes my header incorrect fine so now if i rerun my test case i should get a failure so my check should failed in this case so this is again a negative test case to so go to your terminal and rerun the same command and now we will see the failure would be 100% and checks will be 0% so let me show you the failure so you see this is 100% let me expand it and you see checks is 0% and status code validation actually got failed why because we are passing the invalid bearer token 
let me correct it again so here we have covered how we can pass the url and how we can pass the headers but there's one more thing which we can improve let's say you have multiple http requests in the same test so it's not a good way to pass the url again and again so what we can do we can create one constant variable and assign the value of url to that variable so let's do that so we create a constant variable i will name it as url and let's paste the url value from here now we have got our url and inside the http dot get i will pass url so now this url is actually picking your this value fine so where this is helpful so in case you have multiple http request which are using the same base url then it's a better way to create a constant variable and pass it in your default function so now let's rerun the test case and let's see if this is also working fine or not so let me just clear it quickly and rerun the same commands and the checks should be 100% this time so if we see this is 100% this is actually picking up your correct url and you can double check from the request failure as well so this is how you can create a cleaner test case is totally fine to pass your url and your headers directly but if you are working in a project in a team it's better to create your test in a more optimized way so you can reuse it multiple times i just gave you an example of url and maybe the headers can also be same so it's always better to create objects like this and then and use it in your test so let's go back to our mind map so we have covered verifying the status code how we can pass header we also saw negative test case where we passed invalid header value and we saw it was the test was failing our checks were failing in the log and in the positive test case as well so in the upcoming video i'll be coming up with the other http request where we will see how we can handle it for a post request how we can pass our payload and how we can verify the response so yeah that's it for the video and if you really like the content please like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching